In this video, I am going to discuss about the essential non-technical skills required for piping design engineers. At first, you have to understand why is it required to have the non-technical skills being a technical person. So being a technical person, you possess some technical skills which will only help you to grow to a certain extent. In order to grow exponentially, in order to grow to the higher role, higher responsibility, you should also have the non-technical skills which I am going to explain in this video. Because this is going to drive your growth, your success, your salary increments, your promotions and your reputations and everything in whichever project or the company that you are working. So along with technical skills, if you can possess the non-technical skills which I am going to explain in this video, you will surely grow faster than others. So without wasting your time, let's get started. So the first skill that I would like to highlight over here is that project tracking skill. Project tracking skill is a skill where you will track every activities in the project with respect to your piping design deliverables and responsibilities. So basically, as a piping design engineer, you will be tracking the activities, inputs and all informations with respect to your project in this particular sheet. So you will have to prepare a sheet where you will observe all this information so that this sheet will give you the current status of the project right from the inputs to be shared with the client and inputs to be received from the client, inputs to be shared with the discipline, inputs pending from the disciplines and uh, what are the actions that you have to take tomorrow and what are the actions that was pending from you from last couple of weeks and what are the other inputs which are internally pending, who has to deliver what, all this information this sheet will have to provide you. So you have to have an excellent project tracking sheet so that this will give you the exact current status of the project. So you don't have to run around with uh, everybody in the team or you don't have to check with the project engineers to understand what is going on in your project. So if you do not have this sheet, the major problem that you will experience is that you will lose the track of the project. You will not be able to meet any requirement of the project requirement which will come from the client or your internals basically. So you need to have this track so that it will help you for your daily actions, for the weekly actions, your commitments and your internal drives and motivations. So that is important. So people generally who don't follow this generally make a lot of mess in the project. So Please understand that project tracking skill is very important where you have to have a sheet. The, it could be an Excel sheet or it could be any of your yeah, the, the softwares you can use it or it could be a notepad or something. But you should have something where you will observe and capture every information about the project so that it will give you the exact current status of the project. This is the first one. Let's go to the second one. Second important skill for any piping design engineer is right folder structure practice. What is right folder structure practice? Imagine in a project when you receive multiple documents, you simply put every documents in one particular folder and you have to uh, imagine a time that you had to find a particular file or something and you will have to go through thousands of documents you already kept it in the folder you will waste a lot of time in finding one particular document if you don't maintain the proper folder structure in the system so you should have the structured way of folder prepared and named accordingly you can save the files for example imagine at the beginning of the project you received a revision zero file then at the middle of the project you might have received revision 1 and consecutively you might receive revision 2, 3 or whatever it is. It could be a vendor drawing, it could be an internal drawing or interdisciplinary checkings or whatever it is. But as long as you have the right folder structure and saved these files in the right folders, you will not have any issue in finding these documents and also to share with other teams. If not, imagine that if you uh, choose the wrong file and the information that you supposed to use it from the revision 3 but you used it from the revision 1. So what will happen? There will be a major conflict in your design itself, right? So that is the reason why you need to have the folder structure, appropriate folder structure. I don't want you to create a folders for every file, every individual file. I want to have the simplest folder structure according to your convenience so that you will be able to find and track the right file in the right folder. For example, 
uh, when you receive an in interdisciplinary files from process you can you can save these files in the process folder and likewise civil likewise electrical and uh, you have an instrumentation whatever it is actually so you need to have the simplest folder structure where you can save the files in an appropriate manner that is very important otherwise this will lead to a lot of mess in the project when you choose a wrong information so this is the second most important things number three is strong communication what is strong communication i would like to highlight over here the strong communication not only for speaking but also for writing because when you're working in a project you would interact with a lot of people through phones or by personally directly going and speaking to them and also you will transfer a lot of email communications here and there so it is really important to have the strong communication so that you will be able to pass on the right information only then you will receive the right information let me tell you an example actually there was an engineer from piping has requested the instrumentation to share the control valve details but predominantly the piping engineer requests the dimensional details of the control valve with respect to the drawings that the vendor generally supplies or any standard drawings that will exactly tell you the dimensional details ratings size of the actuator and everything so when you simply put a control valve details you may not get the right information from the CNA or instrumentation engineer. You really categorically you have to tell that I would like to have the details with respect to dimension and uh, catalogs and drawings and ratings and everything. So once you make it very clearly actually, so there is no confusion in the email communications or when you're communicating directly to the person. So you need to have a strong communication in the sense it's not about speaking in an American accent or grammatically. You need to speak in a way that it will support your project. Otherwise, what will happen? The opposite person will understand something else and he will share something else. To and fro communications will increase and you will waste a lot of time. Strong communication is intent for appropriate communications, both in speaking and writing. So if you possess these skills, you will really shine in the projects because you will see that a lot of people don't follow and don't have the strong communications who are working with you. Try to improve the skill. This will really help you to shine better than others. So let's go to the number four. Number four, I would like to say very strongly is the presentation skill. Why presentation skill is really important for piping design engineers that you have to understand. In a project, you will get into a lot of troubles. For some of the troubles and some of the problems, you will have to go to any technical experts or the client itself. So in order to go to the client uh, for any discussions or clarifications, you have to present them. So there is a way to present them. If you present your problem in a way that they cannot understand, then it really going to cause a bad reputation for you and for your growth as well. And ultimately, you are not solving the problem and the client will have uh, a wrong understanding and they will start suggesting you something which is totally not relevant to your problem. So you have to have a good presentation skill so that you can present the issue in a simple manner in an appropriate manner so that it will give the real uh, the, the ground reality to the client side actually you can use ppt or any other tools in order to present your problems but the very important thing is that how you present you have to present in a way that it is understood properly to the client so make it very simple and you have to uh, analyze the order of sharing the information so in order to um, what you call highlight some problems you can you will not be directly going to the problem you will have to explain the scenario you will have to show the reasons what are the problems that you have faced and and what by doing this and what result you would get and what are the results you have expected which is not achievable everything you have to put it in an order that is what i am saying actually i have seen that people mess really bad during the presentations and they would not go in a particular order you can always systemize and customize your presentation and also you can take an observations or uh, comments from your superiors whether you have to include anything in this or not so that you will have some confidence in presenting also and by um, getting a right comment from right people you will also be able to correct the your mistakes so presentation skill it's very much important so being a beginner if you start from now itself it will really help you so that's how you will start 
start growing and your reputations uh, will start growing so please make a note your english or your grammatical english or accent doesn't matter but speaking rightly speaking with a composed manner presenting to the intent of the discussions are the primary factors in any projects when you are working or presenting in uh, for any particular issues actually keep this in mind and uh, please prepare the presentation skill now let's go to the last but not least is one of the most important thing for any piping design engineer is this is a non technical skills but you need to possess you should not miss this particular skill which is schedule management what is schedule management schedule management is nothing but you have to comply with the project schedule you have to meet the deliverables you have to deliver your documents on time as per the project schedule that is very important imagine that you haven't followed the schedule and you have delivered the documents which is more than your deadline what will happen client is paying you for a project in order to deliver on particular date if you don't deliver the client will not pay you if you don't get money you will not be uh, your your salary will not be credited the company will incur lot of loss so it is really important to deliver the document on time so how to deliver a document on time that is the schedule management you need to aware what document should go in next month what are the documents you should deliver after 2 months and 3 months accordingly you have to plan your resources and your activities and everything right from meetings or discussions or any any sort of clarifications everything you have to drive from yourself schedule management is one of the important thing the people those who do not follow the schedule are the one who is really getting the bad reputations in the organization because because schedule is everything in the project as long as you don't meet the schedule you will whatever good quality of work that you have shown in the middle of the project beginning of the project it's not going to help you but if you can meet the schedule then that will really boost your previous work also so it is really important to follow the schedule for that you need to have a strong mindset in order to follow the schedule manage the resources manage your activities so that you can deliver on time so these are the five strong non technical skills one should possess in order to grow faster in order to get good reputations in order to increase your salary in order to get more promotion because to learn technical skills you will show a lot of interest but in order to learn the non technical skills people will not show more interest that will come from the experience only so people who are generally accountable and responsible are those who generally have these skills so if you really wanted to grow faster or shine faster and get more promotions and to go to the next level to the higher responsibilities try to learn these non technical skills which are essential for all piping design engineers i truly feel that the information that i have shared in this video will really help you to understand the importance of these skills i will meet you in another fantastic video until then bye from subhash chandra